Hello, brethren. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we are so thankful to God for yet another opportunity to come to you to bring the midweek Bible study. We are so excited to uh, just uh, open the Word of God and to grow uh, with you. Uh, and I was so thankful to each and every one of you who has been with us on this journey as we open the Word of God and uh, get to know the truth uh, of God's uh, uh, promises, uh, the truth in His Word. What does He say about life? Because God is indeed concerned about us. So that's what we're going to talk about. And today is so special because it is the last uh, uh, the last session or the last episode in the series of Possessing the Land. Amen. And today I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. As usual, I'm with my beautiful wife, Pam, and uh, we are going to have a great time in the presence of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, we welcome you all into uh, the midweek uh, Bible study. Today we'll come a little early because uh, we have some errands to run in the evening. But we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We hope uh, you are doing fine. Uh, God has been faithful to us. We are thriving. Uh, he has given us the grace to stand. Uh, he has given us the anointing to stand Amen. in these times. So we just want to bless the name of God for the opportunity that he has given us to serve him. Amen. Serving God is an opportunity. It I is. mean, it's not everybody not, not everybody has the grace to do this, you know. So many people are anointed out there, but mm. for some reason they fail and they haven't got the grace to pick themselves up and stand again in the Word of God. So we just want to thank God. We don't take this for granted. It's an opportunity yeah. to be in this place. It's an opportunity that we can still say that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God mm. is good. We want to welcome Amen. each and every one of you who is uh, tuning in from mm. all parts of the world, uh, from yeah. uh, Europe, mm. uh, from uh, Africa, from mm. uh, Asia, from uh, yeah. the Middle East. Uh, from South America, from uh, mm. Antarctica, from Iceland. Yeah. We love you. Uh, for those of you tuning in here in the United States, mm. from Canada, mm. God bless you. We see uh, where you all are tuning in from. And uh, if you, this is your first time, mm. let us know where you're tuning from, which city you're from, mm. which town. And, uh, you know, we would love for you to be a part of what God is doing here uh, mm. at this ministry, the Greater mm. River Church. And uh, we come to you, uh, uh, you know, every week for the midweek Bible study and then for the Sunday service while we're in this situation. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you are in the area, uh, in the Boston area, Massachusetts area, that is where we are best. And uh, if you're in the area, you know, holler at us, let us know that you're in the place and uh, we would love to have you and, uh, you know, just connect with you Amen. in the name of Jesus. So Amen. today it is the mm -hmm. last uh, episode of possessing the land and we are going to go straight into the word of God because we have a lot of material to cover today so make mm. sure you have your uh, your book you have your notebook you mm. have your if you have your phone and it has a notepad mm. open the notepad you're going to mm. take some notes and I'm going to put the scriptures up for you so you can follow but this is so important and uh, I said earlier that this I believe is one of the most or maybe the most important component mm. that you need to possess the land or the blessing that God has given unto us. Mm. And uh, last year I was uh, requested, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, the church where, you know, we were uh, uh, fellowshipping from and serving, uh, they asked me to talk about this subject and uh, man, the impact was so powerful. I did this teaching mm. and while I was digging more, the Lord just opened up new uh, things to share. So Amen. I believe Amen. this is so important. So mm. if there is somebody you want where you know you wish well mm. to be successful mm. you know share you know hit the share button mm. let them know text them hey tell Amen. them the greater river midweek bible study is on and they are going to be blessed your mm. family is going to be blessed mm. your mind is going to be opened up mm. and you will not remain the same Amen. so today we're studying uh from the book of genesis chapter 28 genesis 28 is where we're picking it up from today and that today we are focusing on jacob uh, the last three weeks or four, we mm. focused on Isaac, but today yeah. we're focusing on Jacob. Mm. And uh, it's so amazing how God just stitched the whole thing together. You know, sometimes when you're preparing a study like this, you have a route you want to take, but mm. then at the end of the day, you want to let the Spirit of God direct. And I'm so glad that He led us here to Jacob, and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So Genesis chapter 28, uh, let's start from 
from verse 1, and I'm going to read some portions, and then we're going to be picking it up along the way. So Genesis 28 says, Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. Mm. Isaac called Jacob his son and blessed him and charged him and said to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Paddan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. And verse 3 says, May God Almighty mm. bless you mm. and make you fruitful and multiply you that you may be an assembly of peoples mm. and give you the blessing of Abraham mm. to you and your descendants with you that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger which God gave to Abraham. Amen. Now this is so important because Isaac, we've been learning about Isaac, how God blessed him in the midst of a famine. Mm -hmm. God blessed him so much that where he was, uh, you know, the Philistines, they were envious of him and they asked him to leave. Mm -hmm. Even the king had to come himself mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, sign the treaty with him, a covenant, you know, because you, you've been blessed so much. You're mm -hmm. so great. Mm -hmm. We are scared of you. We need to sign an agreement that you may not come against us or, you know, join with our enemies to attack us mm -hmm. because of the blessing. And I believe when God blesses us mm -hmm. or the blessing God wants for us is the kind of blessing that is going to make people notice. Mm -hmm. And notice the Philistines were not children of the covenant. These were outsiders. Yeah. But the blessing of God was so powerful that it caused the outsiders to seek, you know, uh, Isaac out. So that is the same thing God wants to do for us. He Amen. wants to bless us so much. Amen. And we read about how God blessed Isaac mm. so much. And uh, I love the language. It says that the man became so rich. Mm. He became so great. Mm. He became so powerful yeah. that they noticed. And that is our prayer for you today, that God will bless you so Amen. much that Amen. the people around you, mm. the people who mocked you, the mm. people who despised you, mm. the people who looked down on you yeah. will come to ask you, what Hallelujah. are you doing? Hallelujah. Is there something special? Amen. What is what is the ingredient? Amen. What is the recipe? What is the, what is the secret sauce? Secret. That is the prayer. And mm. the same way Isaac bless his son Jacob mm. is the same way bless your child of God Amen. that what we are, are preaching today Amen. will come and be alive and active in your life Hallelujah. and one of the things honey that I picked out mm. is that it is important we as parents mm. to bless our children yeah you know much as the blessing was already there it came from Abraham it didn't come from Isaac because God called Abraham and told him, I want you to go to a place I will show you. And he told him that I will make you a father of, you know, of nations and all the peoples of the earth shall be blessed through you. Mm. And so he could have just said, you know what, the blessing is in the DNA. Mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, I'm, I'm not going to prophesy anything. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know, you already have my stuff. You, know, you can mm. go ahead with my stuff. Yeah. But he went ahead and transferred the blessing. And so we brothers and sisters, to go ahead and bless our children because Amen. there is power inside of you. Mm. When God, uh, you know, created you and more so when mm. you gave your life to him, mm. he put a blessing inside of you as a parent. So you have a right, you have a power, you have a supernatural ability mm. to speak life and to the lives of your children. Amen. Amen. Let me go get King. All right, so we do have uh, our cast member, King. Uh, he wants to be a part of the party, so we're going to get him. But while we do, I'm going to keep going. And so it is important for us as children of God to bless our children. Why do we have to bless our children? Because the words you speak to your children are going to be life-changing. Many of us today, or many of you today, are dealing with stuff in your life that you have no idea because your parents spoke you know negatively you know on you they spoke ill about you they didn't bless you they only told you how you are so stubborn oh who's your mother you know where did your mother come from oh, these behaviors are from your mother's side oh look at how uh you know how uh disobedient you are and uh, where i come from people will reference to a certain tribe or a certain clan. You know, this kind of behavior is from this clan, from this tribe. And so all those behaviors, all those, uh, you know, uh, attributes from that side 
of uh, you know where you come from you know maybe from your mother's side your father's side because we are spiritual people because we are spiritual beings you find yourself operating in these behaviors in these habits so it is so important our parents if mm -hmm. you have a child you need to speak blessings over your child mm -hmm. you know i speak to our baby king mm -hmm. i say king i bless you in the name of the father you are going to be a blessing you are going to be great you mm -hmm. are going to you're going to possess land you're going to possess business you're going to employ people mm -hmm. when you speak these words because you are a parent God honors those words. Amen. Why? Because mm. you have the seed of God inside of you. In fact, let us go in the uh, in the book of Genesis. Let me just read this for you real quick. Genesis chapter chapter two. Genesis chapter two, verse seven. Listen to this. Genesis chapter two, verse seven. I want to get my scripture here. All right, here here it is. It says, "Then the Lord God." formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and man became a living being god formed man from the dust of the ground and breath and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils another version will say that he breathed his spirit inside of him god gave part of himself and mm -hmm. actually one of the meanings of this word breathe in this context in the Hebrew is mm. the word to give up or to lose. Mm. And the Hebrew word is weipa. Weipa. It means to, uh, to breathe, to blow, to sniff, or to give up or lose. Mm. So God gave up part of himself mm. and put it inside of you. Amen. And so that means that you have the right mm. to possess what God says you can possess. You have the right to create just like God created. And mm. so that is so important. I wanted you to know that. All right. Mm. So today the subtopic of our teaching is giving. Giving is a very, very, very powerful component, a very big factor if you are going to possess and walk in the blessing of God in the land of the living. Amen. Giving, mm. once again, is so important. And uh, you can do all the research you want to do. Starting from where we are here today, in the United States as a country, mm. the United States has been a country that gives. Yeah. Whenever there is a crisis anywhere in the world, mm. I don't know if it's still the same, but the United States is the first one to go on the mm. ground. Yeah. They are the first ones to send food. Mm. They're the first ones to send volunteers. Yeah. They're the first ones to send help, medi uh, medicine, missionaries. Mm. Right now, where we come from in Uganda, we have preachers coming, missionaries, going to villages, going to places where you know, the, the, the locals don't want to go to. They are giving of their money. People here sell houses. Mm. You know, we see, you know, white people coming and, you know, we want them to give us money. But many of them, they sell houses. Many of them, they do garage sales. They yeah. sell property. They sell things mm. that are dear to them. They leave work, a month of work in order to go and be a missionary, to give. Mm. So giving is a very big component in order for us to possess and receive the blessing and to move mm. in the blessing of God here in the land of the living. Amen. Giving is so important. I mm. cannot over or under emphasize this. Giving is one of the things you need to get a hold of. And the giving has layers. And today I want to touch about two layers. It's the general giving, you know, giving, you know, give something you have. Mm. And then we're also going to talk about uh, giving unto God of our substance. Mm -hmm. Because when we do this, mm. we not only attract and pull the blessing of God to us, but we're also able to maintain the blessing of God. Amen. Because listen, mm. anybody can get money. Anybody. You can pick money on the road, but it doesn't mean that you're going to maintain it. Yeah. You know, we have people here who win the lottery and they win millions and millions and millions of dollars. Mm. But when you do research on them, they just okay. blow it. Yeah. They go party, they go gamble, they give it to people. Mm. And uh, when you look at them in two years, all they the gone. money mm. is gone. Yeah. So it requires for you to have these keys. Actually, when I was sharing this message, I called it uh, the kingdom keys or keys to a kingdom, a prosperous life. In order to live the kingdom prosperous life, or in order to 
possessed land, mm. you need to have giving at the top of your agenda. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, as a, as a believer, as a family, mm. as a church, as a ministry, I know so many ministries that are so powerful. And I've worked for uh, big ministries here in the United States. Mm. And one of the same things I discovered, honey, is that they may not be so, you know, doing a lot of crazy things. Uh, and I'm not downplaying fasting and prayer and, uh, you know, being extravagant, you know, in the spiritual things. But there's a particular ministry I worked for. And uh, because I was sitting in meetings mm. and one of their big, uh, one of their big priorities was giving. Mm. Every Sunday, the money that they got from the offering, they had a percentage, and that percentage was dedicated to missions, to giving in the community, mm. to giving internationally. Mm. They had a strategy mm. of not only giving to the people in the church who have needs, mm -hmm. that actually had a percentage that goes to helping people who are running uh, low on rent or who don't have food, who are sick in the hospitals. Mm. But they also had a, a budget for the local community where they serve. They made sure that they, they give into the community. And so as a ministry, if your ministry is going to grow and have an impact, mm. you need to give in the community. And that is why companies, mm. corporations, mm. they have what we call corporate responsibility or social responsibility mm. and they send out their employees and they are actually here they pay for volunteer time you take certain hours in the month and you go out you either do you know uh, a car drive or you take you know you go to a food pantry you mm. prepare food to feed the you know the homeless or poor families yeah. so these are principles that the world already knows Amen. and we as the church mm. we as the children of God need to even do better mm -hmm. giving is a very big component mm -hmm. it brings the blessing of god and while we're still here let me tell you more about giving what it's going to do in uh, proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 mm -hmm. it says he that he that has pity on the poor lends unto the lord and that which he has given will be repaid back to him or in a simple language when you give to those in need or to those who are poor mm. you lend to god mm. and the scripture says that what you have given will be repaid back to you so that is what i love about god Amen. that everything we do for god mm. is not in vain mm. he re, you know he repays he is the rewarder of those who honestly seek him so this is so important. If you haven't been given and that you are stingy, what we call, uh, you know, you have a gummy hand, you know, you have like a super glue hand. You know, we have that saying back back home that you are, that person is a super glue. He doesn't release. He doesn't let go. But did you, uh, do you remember what uh, the word that God, uh, the word uh, that God spoke in the beginning in Genesis? Mm. God breathed. God gave up mm. of himself. Mm. So um, one of the things that we need to understand is that God is a giver. Because yeah. you may ask yourself a question, why do I have to give? God is a giver. Mm. And you and I came from God. You didn't come from your mother. Mm. You didn't come from your father. Mm. Your mother and father were only vessels that God used to bring you here on earth. Mm. But you have the spirit of God inside of you and it is the spirit of God that makes you a living uh, productive human being so if God is a giver we then ought we to give to give mm. that is his nature that is one of his characters in fact the book uh, the Bible says in uh, 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 John chapter 3 verse 16 we all know the scripture mm. that God loved the world so much and what did he do and he gave his and he gave his he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him mm. shall not perish but have, an everlasting, but have life. everlasting life. Mm. And when you give, what do you give? What, what kind of giving brings the blessing? Mm. You give what is valuable to you. Yeah. God gave what was valuable to him. Mm. He gave of himself. He gave his son. Mm. And uh, his son was the payment for our sins and mm. without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins mm. the scripture says so if god just used the you know uh 
cows and goats because what happened in the Old Testament, people used to give animals mm. for the forgiveness of their sins. Yeah. But this wasn't enough. So they had to do it every time they went to the presence of God. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't enough. So God said, you know what? We need to do something that is going to turn people from their sin. That is going to pay for their sin because God is holy. Mm-hmm. He is a holy God. He cannot look on unholiness. He cannot look on sin. God and sin do not coexist. Mm-hmm. So he had to you know, use Jesus. He had to give him up. Actually, Jesus sacrificed himself. He offered himself willingly so that you and I may have life. And so giving is so important. And so because God is a giver, we need to be givers. So here, uh, I wrote something very important I wanted to share with you. That giving is a sup- giving is a spiritual thing. It is the spiritual currency that connects us to the giver. Giving is the spiritual currency that connects us to the giver mm-hmm. and to the flow of his blessing. Amen. And that just think about when you're in love, mm. in a relationship. Mm. Can you imagine being in a relationship where there is no transaction? Mm. Or whether it's a, a one-sided relationship? Mm. So when, you know, when for example, when I saw you mm. and I, I liked you and we started talking and we loved each other, I had to give you something. I had to give you a ring to show you how precious you are. I didn't get any ring on the street. Mm. It was in the thousands of dollars. Mm. And that was a commitment to you that, hey, I love you and um, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Mm. I want to take you off the market. Mm. And so that is the kind of giving that God is expecting of us. You give what is precious mm. and valuable to you. Mm. And that we all know, the, uh, you know the, the example of Cain and Abel in the scriptures, yeah. they all give sacrifices to God. Mm. And the scripture says that Cain got some of his you know, vegetables. He was a farmer. Mm. And he brought it and sacrificed to God. And Abel was, uh, you know, he was a shepherd. He went and got the best out of his flock, mm. the healthy, nice lamb. And he offered it to God. And what happened? Mm. God accepted the offering of Abel Mm. and he rejected the offering of Cain. Mm. In fact, when I was growing up, I don't know if you remember, but we had good news Bibles where they had pictures of like little cartoons, animated pictures. And they showed that the smoke of Abel went up straight Mm -hmm. in the sky and the the smoke of Cain went up like a coil like this. (laughs) (laughs) I remember those babies. You remember? <laughs> so God rejected. It was an offering, but God does not accept anything. In fact, David says somewhere that, will I offer to God something that doesn't cost me anything? So in order to attract, yeah. in order to receive, in order to maintain the blessing of God, you need to give what is valuable to you. Mm. And uh, let's get in the, in, in the word of God. Uh, in Genesis chapter 28, that's where we're focusing on, uh, on uh, Jacob today. And so we already read from verse 1 all the way to verse 4. Okay? And so let us jump. So in your personal time, take some time and uh, uh, read from verse 6 all the way all the way to verse 9. And then uh, let me pick it up from verse 11. Mm. to the very end and you're going to learn something so verse 11 says so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep verse 12 then he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and it stopped reached to heaven and there angels of God were ascending and descending on it Mm. verse 13 and behold the lord stood above it and said i am the lord god of abraham abraham your father and the god of isaac Mm. the land on which you lie i will give to you and your descendants now remember the land where jacob was because at this point jacob he you know played a game with his uh with his brother his brother was hungry 
and he sold him, uh, Esau sold his birthright. He was the firstborn, mm -hmm. and he sold the birthright to Jacob because he was, he was hungry. He, you know, he was coming from the field. Mm -hmm. And so Esau was mad, and uh, when he learned about what Jacob had did, you know, he wanted to kill him. And so the parents told Jacob to leave and to flee and go to his uncles, you know, uh, to Laban. That's where he's going right now. Mm -hmm. And so on his journey, the Lord visits him and he promises to give him this land. Mind you, this is a place he has never been to. But God is promising him that I am going to give you this place. So listen. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Verse 14. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Do you see that? Mm. God promised this blessing on Abraham. He promised it to Isaac. Mm. And he's promising it to Jacob as well. Yeah. Now listen. In verse 15. Behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. So God is pledging, mm. God is assuring Jacob that I am going to bless you. I'm going to give you this land in you and in your descendants. They are going to be blessed. And I am going to make sure mm. that you come back to this very place. Mm. Amen. Amen. And in verse 16, it says, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. Mm. I did not know it. Amen. And verse 17, mm. and he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Amen. Now, remember, this was just a dry place. Mm. And as a matter of fact, there were no pillars. He had to pick up a stone to lay his head. Mm. But what we talked about on Sunday or on Wednesday is that now we are the tabernacle of God. Yeah. And it says in uh, Revelation that the tabernacle of God is with men and he shall dwell with them. So Jesus here, oh God, is already dwelling where Jacob is. Mm. God is already fulfilling the, the, the promise even before Jesus sets his foot on earth. Amen. Amen. So he said that from in this very place I will bring you. Mm. So verse 18 or verse 17. This is not, none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Verse 18, then Jacob rose early in the morning mm. and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. In other words, he built an altar. An altar. Mm -hmm. That's what we talked about last, uh, last, last Wednesday. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. He built an altar. He didn't have much. Mm. All he had was oil. And that was the precious thing he had in his possession. Mm. So as you're giving to God, you're giving him your best. Anytime you have an encounter with God, mm. that is why you know I, I encourage people when you're in a service and God blesses and there's an outpouring of the presence of God. Mm. I learned this from the woman of God I used to serve under, Pastor Imelda. Whenever God moves so powerfully, mm. you've already given an offering, you're tight, but because m maybe miracles are happening, mm. what you do right there, you write a check. While the anointing is still flowing. Mm. Or if you meet a man of God that mm. has blessed you. Or you, you notice something peculiar yeah. about this person. Mm. Do not just let him go. Make sure you give them something Amen. as an offering. Mm. When you do that, you're attracting the blessing of God. Amen. Amen. And so listen here. He poured oil on top of it. And verse 19. And he called the name of that place Bethel. Which means, you know, uh. Uh, the house of God. Then uh, verse 20. This is so important. Mm. Then Jacob made a vow. Saying if God will be with me. And keep me in this way. Mm. That I am going. And give me bread to eat. And clothing to put on. Mm. Now this shows you how desperate he was. He said God you know what. 
I don't even need so much. I'm I trying to clothes. just <laughs> clothes and bread to eat. I'm running away from my brothers. Mm. I'm going to a place I have never been. Yeah. I'm going to meet people that mm. I've only heard about. Mm. Mind you, there was no television back then. There was no internet. So he is going to interact with people he doesn't know. Mm. And he said, but God, if you only give me bread to eat and clothing to put on mm. so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. Amen. Verse 22. Mm. And this stone which I have set up as a pillar shall be God's house. Hallelujah. Now, was this a building? Mm -mm. It wasn't a building. Yep. It was in the middle of nowhere, mm. somewhere out there in a desert probably. Mm. And he said, this shall be God's house. Mm. And we talked about the altar that where you, you know, where you are, where you position yourself mm. in your room or in, you know, in you as a person, you can be the place where God dwells. In fact, the scripture says that don't you know that you are the temples of the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And he dwells within you. Mm. So he said, this shall be God's house. And listen, this is the game changer right here. And uh, as I was studying last night, I screamed. And you were scared. You said, honey, what happened? I was like, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> this is the game changer. For some reason, I had never seen this verse. Or I probably forgot about it. Mm. And he says, on this stone, which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. Mm. And of all that you give me, mm. I will surely give a tenth to you. Amen. Amen. Whoa. Amen. I screamed at past midnight as I was studying <laughs> from this Bible study. I said, it is done. Because I was planning to take another route of this teaching. And the Lord brought me here. Mm. And I said, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is it. Amen. So Jacob promises mm. to give God a tenth even before God does He's anything. anything. Yeah. Before yeah. the Ten Commandments are given, mm -hmm. before the law is given, mm. Jacob promises to give God a tenth of mm. everything mm. that he will possess in the land where God is taking him. Hallelujah. So this is how important it is to give unto God. Mm. And Jacob saw to it that he gave unto the Lord. And uh, let me show you real quick here. God indeed blessed Jacob. Mm. And let's, let me take you fast forward because of time. In Genesis chapter 30, verse 27 to verse 30. Listen to what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 30, verse 27 to 30. Listen. But Laban replied, If I have found favor in your eyes. Mm. So now, God has blessed Laban because of Jacob. Mm. And so Jacob is tired. He has yeah. married wives. You know, he has uh, gotten some wealth. Mm. He wants to go back home. Mm. It's been 20 plus years in, in, you know, in, uh, you know, in exile. So he, t he, t he tells Laban, his uncle, mm. I want to go back home. And so Laban says, if I have found favor in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. Amen. Now, this is a non-believer. Declaring. And he says, I have yeah. learned by divination. Mm. And divination is a source of, uh, is a, it's a, another form of sorcery or finding supernatural things via, you know, uh, you know, uh, worshiping ancestral spirits or, you know, via occult. Mm. So he was not, he didn't find out from the Lord. God did not reveal to him that he was blessed because of Jacob. But he says, I have learned by divination. And this is a practice that people used to do. Yeah. People of the East, mm. they used to worship the stars. And, uh, you know, their communication or whatever they saw, the events, they were able to come to conclusions. And, you know, they, you know they, that's how they used to live their life. That's, that was their spiritual, you know, connection. Let me put King aside. Amen. Mm. So he says, I have learned by divination that I have been blessed, that the Lord has blessed me because of you, child of God. Our prayer today is that the Lord will bless you wherever you are, that the people will notice that there is a hand of God upon your life. That is my prayer that God will bless you, 
that the family members who, you know, looked back on you. You know, I, I hear so many stories of children who have been ostracized, mm. who have been taken out of the clan because they gave their life to Christ. I know people who, you know, you come from a Muslim family. Mm. And I know, you know, some Muslim, actually is a pastor that I know, uh, a relative of mine now, an in-law. When he gave his life to Christ, his father told him, I am no longer your father. Do not even associate your name, uh, my name with yours. Mm. Go to the, to the same people, mm. let them be your family. Mm. And they, you know, they, they gave up on him. But my prayer, our prayer today, is that God will bless you so much that even the non-believers will notice the blessing of God, not only on you, mm. but the blessing you're going to do in the community. Amen. And I remember I shared uh, how God used us to start a ministry in the village where my mother is born. And we were able to bring a blessing to the village that even the people who hated us, the people who are still plotting against us to this day, mm. they were coming to us. They were bringing their children to our school. They weren't paying a penny. Mm. They were getting a blessing. They were getting clean water mm. from our source. Mm. They were getting food. Mm. When you bring, you know, clothes, shoes, you yeah. know, toys, mm. or, you know, have a program, we teach their children as well. Yeah. Why? Amen. Because of the blessing. And that is my prayer, is that God will bless you so much. And it should be that way, that God blesses you, that your blessing affects your neighbors. Your blessing affects your community. Your blessing affects your village. Your blessing of the blessing of God upon your life affects the town where you live. Mm. That they'll live and say, This is the town where so and so comes from. And I like how they do it here in the United States. Mm. When you go to a certain town, or just give an example, uh, uh, the actor who just died, Chadwick Bosman, mm. he came from the, a little town in South Carolina called Anderson. And now all of a sudden, Anderson comes on the world map. And uh, I can bet you this, when we drive through Anderson, they're going to say, welcome to Anderson, the birthplace of Chadwick Boseman of Wakanda. <laughs> that, is, that's, that happens in the United States everywhere. Yeah, if there was a president, mm. uh, for example, if you go to the place where G.F. Kennedy was born, mm. they say, welcome, welcome to this city where the president G.F. Kennedy was born. So people start to associate mm. your name with their town. Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of blessing God wants to give you. In fact, mm. it says uh, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. And so that is why we pray God. Father, the God of Abraham, mm. Isaac, and Jacob. God bless them so much that up to this day, we, we are still praying. Yeah. And there are people in my life that I admire. Mm. And I say, God, the God who blessed Pastor Robert Kayanja, Mm. The God who blessed Pastor Imelda, mm. the God who blessed, you know, this minister, this person, mm. people that I have interacted with or have seen their journey. Mm. God, because sometimes it is hard to, you know, to for your mind to apprehend Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Yeah. Mm. You've never seen You've them. You've never met them, yeah. But right. there are people you know, you know, I used to pray from. For example, you went to Pastor Bogemba's church mm. and uh, you know his journey. Mm -hmm. I know his journey. I remember seeing him starting out coming to our church mm. to sing a song. So I've seen him, God blessing him from asking for an opportunity to sing a song and mm. sell a CD to now having a mega church and being a blessing to nations. Mm. Mm. God has put him on the world map. So mm. it is very appropriate for me to say the God who blessed Pastor Wilson Bugambe. Mm. If you are able to do it for him, you can do it for, you can do it for me. Amen. And that is the kind of blessing we are praying Amen. for you today. Mm. That God will bless you. That your enemies mm. will know that you are blessed. Okay. So let's go back to the scriptures. Mm. Genesis chapter 30, verse 27 to 30. So Laban tells Jacob, I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. And he added, name your wages and I will pay them. 29. Mm. Then Jacob answered, you know how I have served you and how your livestock have thrived under my care. Mm. 
mm. verse 30 indeed you had very little before my arrival by now but now your wealth has increased many times over mm. the lord has blessed you wherever i set foot but now when may i also provide for my own household so in mm. other words he's trying to get himself out of the contract he mm. wants to go back home but what I, the reason i opened up the scripture for you i wanted to show you that god blessed jacob so much mm -hmm. to the point that his boss his uncle noticed the blessing and he said you cannot go and actually he asked him to stay a little longer mm -hmm. and that you can read for yourself in the interest of time i won't go into those details okay so god blessed him mm -hmm. and jacob remember he promised that he would give unto the lord he would give unto the lord a tenth of everything that god gives to him and so let's get into the giving part giving a tenth unto god this is one of the ways that you tap into the blessing of god mm. this is one of the ways you tap into a unlimited flow of the blessing of god mm. this is how you are able to protect your wealth this is how you're able to protect your family Amen. when you give a tenth mm. or what we call a tithe mm. unto god mm. you not only have a flow of money coming in mm. because you can be having a lot of money coming in but you're also spending it on sicknesses mm. you're spending it on uh, accidents you're spending it on uh, things breaking in your house but the blessing of god is going to protect your substance hallelujah amen? amen so in the book of malachi we all know uh this scripture every pastor reads it for you to give on sunday morning but this is not only a sunday morning affair Mm. This is a covenant mm. that when you take a hold of this yeah. you are tapping into an unlimited flow of blessing you are protecting your wealth you're mm. protecting your children Amen. when you pay a tithe mm. when you give unto God mm. sickness shall not come unto you hallelujah amen when amen. you give unto the lord you give mm. a tithe there's a special protection mm. of god there's a special favor of God upon you. Amen. And uh, Amen. I love how Amen. God speaks here in Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Let's start from verse 6. It says, "Because I the Lord do not change, you descendants of Jacob, talk mm. about Jacob today, mm. are still robbing me. Remember Jacob made a covenant unto God. Mm. And he said, God, for everything you give me, I am going to give back to you." Yes. But now years later mm. hundreds of years later or thousands of years later the descendants of Jacob they forsook the Lord and they weren't doing what their grandfather was doing mm. and so God comes here in Malachi through the prophet Malachi and he says because I the Lord do not change yeah God spoke to Jacob that mm. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bring you back to this place. Mm. So God didn't change his position. Oh yeah. He gave them the land. He says, mm. "But you gen descendants of Jacob have He says, "I do not change, and you descendants of Jacob have not been destroyed." Listen verse 7. "Yet from the days of your fathers mm. you have turned away from my statutes and you have not kept them." Mm. He says, "Return to me." and i will return to you says the lord of hosts amen how do we return to god mm. we not only return to god with our lips mm. there's a scripture where it says that you worship me with your lips mm. but your hearts are far away from me so yeah. god wants us to worship him not only with our lips with songs and crying and tears mm. but also with our mm. substance mm. we say that we love god he says love the lord your god with all your heart with all your mind mm. and with all your strength mm. what is your strength that is the money that you get that is the produce that you have and now when the bible was written this was an agricultural economy they used to plant crops for mm. a living or you know some of them did business but they were mainly farmers and so the example he uses is of uh, the language that they would understand in that day mm. so if you do love god mm. if you believe god you are going to worship him and honor him 
even with your substance, mm. with the money that comes from your paycheck, yeah. with the money that comes from your inheritance, mm. you are going to honor God with your time. Yeah. Giving a tithe is not only of money, but your time. We talked about it last, uh, last week. When you wake up in the morning, you give a portion of your time unto God. Mm. That is why on Sunday, we go and worship God. And that is why God said, you know, you shall work the rest of the days, but the Sabbath is holy unto me. Mm. God wants, you know, that one day out of the seven yeah. to worship him, to, to rest, to meditate upon him. Amen. So we're still in Malachi. And it says, but you ask, how can we return? Verse 8, as I'm getting ready to finish because I know we got stuff to do. Uh, verse 8 says, Will a man rob God, yet you are robbing me? God is saying that you, we are robbing. Mm. When we don't give him what belongs to him, mm. when we eat the tenth, God gives you 100% and you eat all of it. Mm. He says that you're robbing him, but you ask, how do we rob you? He says, in, uh, in tithes and offerings. And verse 9 it says, You are cursed. You are cursed with a curse. Yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. And so the point here, God is saying that you are already under a curse. Mm. But you are still comfortable in the in curse. The curse. Mm -hmm. You are still robbing me. Mm. So brothers and sisters, and that when you look at a curse, a curse is a, is a verbal invocation uh, you know of a negative utterance mm. upon you like mm. they say that you will never get married or oh, your father was a drunkard you're gonna drink like your father mm. your father was so promiscuous you're gonna be you know uh, sleeping with every you know scarf that passes before you mm. they're cursing you indirectly and that is why I said in the beginning it is important for us to bless our Thank children you, yeah because when you speak positively unto them mm -hmm. what you speak over them you know comes and sticks unto them and mm -hmm. it becomes a reality when you speak negative it becomes a reality in their lives as well so god here is telling us that because they forsook his ways mm -hmm. and did not do what their fathers were doing he says that you are cursed with a curse god has already put a curse on them but they are comfortable with the curse it says but you are still robbing me and verse 10, verse 10, he says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Mm. Bring the full tithe. Not some of it. Don't say, God, you know what? Today, you know, things are not good. God, you know what? You also know what, what's mm, going I know, on. I know. <laughs> you also know the situation. And this is not judgment to you, but this has happened to me and us as well. Oh, yeah. And that every now and then we ask God to give us grace and we get back in the game. Mm. But do not put yourself under a curse by not giving unto God what belongs to him. So verse 10 it says, bring the full tithe mm. into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Amen. Test me in this, mm. says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you blessing without measure. And mm -hmm. verse 11, he says, mm -hmm. I will rebuke the devourer, the destroyer, for you, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your land, mm -hmm. and the vine in your field mm -hmm. will not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, Then all the nations will call you blessed, Amen. for you will be a land of delight, Amen. says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. So you see, mm. the same blessing that was on Isaac mm. that caused you know the nations of the world to come and bow to him, mm. the same blessing that was on Jacob mm. that caused his uncle, this was his uncle, mm. his elder, mm. to acknowledge the blessing of God, is the same blessing that is going to fall on us today as children of God, Hallelujah. because we are the spiritual mm. descendants of Abraham mm. by faith, but we need to put this as a priority in our lives. Amen. In order to live in the blessing of God, we need to be givers. Amen. We're giving to the community. Mm. We're giving to people who are in need. Mm. Because when we do that, we're lending unto God. And that is so important and uh, you know interesting in itself. 
Can you imagine learning to God? I know. Every time you give to those who are in need, mm -hmm. you're learning to God. Do not pass those who are, you know, hungry and sick when mm -hmm. you can do something. Mm -hmm. But when you give of your substance unto God, you are opening up a floodgate of heaven. Amen. And as I finish, mm -hmm. and I know pastors, you're going to give me points for this. And uh, I preached about this honey as well. And it opened up people's eyes. Because we have people here in the diaspora, in uh, America, in England, in, uh, you know, in Asia, people in Dubai. Mm. And they have local churches they go to here. Mm. And when they left their country, they had a church back home. And so when they work, they give their tithe. They send it back to Uganda. They send it back to Kenya. They mm. send it back to Jamaica because mm. we have people watching from all over the world. Mm. They send it back to you know their you know their mother church. Mm. And uh, while what you're doing is is right, is good, is a good gesture, but the Lord revealed this to me as I was sharing this message. Mm. He says that there may be food in my house, mm. and I asked the people a question. Where is your house? Mm. Especially people here. You work here. There is a local church that you go to. Mm. There is a man and woman of God who is always there praying for you. Yeah. A man or woman of God who is making sure that you have a place of worship. Mm. When you're having trouble, when you lose your job, mm. the first person you call is your man of God. Here where you are, mm. you say, Pastor, I've been fired. Pastor, the mm. client has died. Yeah. Pastor, pray for me. I need another client. Mm -hmm. You know, and we get th these calls all the time. Mm. Pastor, things are not going well. But when the check comes, you, you send it back to your You send country. it back to Uganda. What you are doing is a great gesture. And I believe the man of God or the woman of God in Uganda or in your home country, in your mother church where you came from, they're going to be blessed mm -hmm. and they're going to pray for you. But there is a blessing there is a house where you are. There is a house that covers you. Mm. And this is so important, especially as children of God, we need to understand this. Mm. You might say, oh, you're saying it because you're a pastor. And now, I will be so wrong to ask for your tithe. You should not send your tithe to me. Mm. I have people who bless this ministry, but I will never ask for your tithe. Why? Because you have a local church where, where you go to. Imagine if yeah. all the people gave, mm. if you have a church of 50 people, mm. the churches we pastor here in the diaspora, or even mainstream churches, what we call a mega church is a church of a thousand people. Mm. That is a mega church, but back home, that is a small church. I know. You know? So can you imagine if all the 50 members, they give their tithe outside, mm. how would you pay rent? Yeah. How would you be able to sustain, you know, the, the ministry? Mm -hmm. How would you be able to do the things to keep, you know, the ministry going? Mm -hmm. So your church needs your tithe. You honor God with giving to the house where you belong. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a house you belong, it's good you find one. Because the people who just give everywhere. But not everyone is praying for you. Some people just receive the money. And, oh, yeah. you know, they go mm -hmm. do whatever they want to do with the money, buy a house buy a car, and that they, they don't even know about you, but your pastor, he knows you. Mm. Especially here in America, people come, they just came from uh, wherever they came from, they don't have a job, they don't have uh, documents, they don't have uh, a car, mm. and you basically help them from day one. Mm. And now you've been able to groom these people, you've helped them to get where they are. And the, you know, the least you can help your pastor or your church is by giving unto the church. Mm. Amen? Amen? Because if you don't do that, mm. your church is going to collapse. You won't be able to you know, buy equipment. You won't be able to help the people in the neighborhood. You won't be able to go to mission trips. Mm. You won't be able to, you know, to give glory to God. And one of the reasons why churches don't even grow is because we don't do outreach. Mm. But even outreach costs money. Mm. And so as I finish, this is so important and I wanted to and with this component, mm. giving is so important. If you want to see the blessing of God, God has promised here in his word that when we give, he says, test me in this, Malachi 3, verse, verse 8. Test me in this and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you blessing without measure. And he says in 11, I will rebuke the devourer for you 
the devourer that you know attacks your car, mm. the devourer that brings sickness, mm. the devourer that uh, that brings uh, chaos in your household. Mm. You just you know you're always quarreling with your wife. You don't even know why you're quarreling, but you're not giving to God. Mm. Children are being disobedient. The blessing is not there. You know you you know you're jumping from job to job. The blessing is not there. Mm. You're not having enough because you are not giving to God what belongs to Him. Brothers and sisters, God is telling us today to return to Him. Mm -hmm. He says in Malachi, return to me and I will return to you. And now, just like the scripture said, mm -hmm. test me in this and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven. And honey, every time I have been faithful in my tithe, Mm. I have seen the blessing of God flowing. And every time I have laxed in giving unto the Lord, I have seen disaster. I have seen things fall apart. And some of you can uh, testify. Some of you are battling things you are not supposed to be battling because when God gives you everything, you just eat it. Mm. But the scripture says that God gives us bread to eat mm. and the seed to sow. Mm. Just like the government here, you know, before you get your paycheck, the government gets their cut. Mm. You know, here in Massachusetts, it's 6%. You know, and uh, so when you pay the federal taxes, some of it is 35%. You know, you even, you know, the government is taking more than what God is asking for. So, the scripture says, let but, the... But earth we, are very, we, we are fearful with it. Yes. The government... Oh, yeah. Taxes. We are scared about yeah. the IRS. I know. <laughs> you know, the IRS is going to get me. You are more scared of the IRS than God... Who gives you the ability because the IRS only taxes what you work for. Mm. But God, actually, I meant to read the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter, uh, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 15, verse 10. Uh, actually, that's not it. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17 to 18, it says. You might say in your heart, the power and strength of my hands have made this wealth for me. Mm. But remember that it is the Lord, your God, who gives you the power to gain wealth mm. in order to confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers even to this day. Mm. It is the Lord who gives you the ability to make wealth. Amen. And Amen. as I finish Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 1, it says, be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live. Amen. So that you may live, brothers mm. and sisters. Mm. God wants us to live. Mm. God wants us to thrive. Mm. God wants us to enjoy life. God not only wants us to survive. Mm. The life of survival is not an enjoyable life. God wants us to live. He says, be careful to follow every command I am giving you to this day, today, so that you may live and do what? And mm. increase mm. and that you may enter mm. and possess the land the Lord promised on earth to your ancestors. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, mm. it is our prayer today Amen. that you will live, mm. that you will increase, mm. and that you will enter. Amen. That you will enter. Amen. You would only enter the land. Mm. Like some of us have come into this country, you know, uh, that we're told is flowing with milk and honey, mm. the promised land. Mm. But when you enter, that you will possess the land, Hallelujah. that you will create businesses, Amen. that you will be offering services, Amen. that you will be paid Amen. for what you are worth in this land. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you mm. are. You Amen. can still thrive. Mm. You can still be a blessing. Mm. You can still be the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. You can still mm. shine the glory of God Amen. because of the glory and the blessing of God that he has bestowed upon you today. Amen. And Amen. on those notes, on mm. those words, I believe this message is so powerful. Mm. Share it with somebody else that you love and Amen. care about. Mm. And today I want to challenge you mm. to test God and give your tithe unto him. Mm. Give what is proportionate, what he has asked for. Mm. Amen. Give what he has asked for, only 10%. And I want you to come back and testify when you see your finances changing, mm. when you see your family atmosphere changing. Yeah. And also give to those who are in need. Mm. Because when you do that, 
Amen. You are lending unto God. Amen. And God is going to repay you. Amen. 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 And uh, so on that note, we're going to call it off. We have a long day ahead of us, but we want to pray God's blessing over you, Amen. over your households, Amen. over everything that you own. Hallelujah. And that be sure to connect with us. Amen. If you want to be a blessing, this message blessed you. You said, Pastor, Amen. I didn't know any of this. Amen. And you want to be a blessing unto this ministry, Amen. please go online. You can give via PayPal. Amen. You can give via text message. You can Amen. give via uh, uh, you can give via the website. You can give via a check. You can send a, a check in the mail. And when you give, we are going to be able to invest it into the kingdom of God. And we, as God is blessing people, mm. as they pray for you or praying for us, God is blessing you as well because of you blessing his people. Amen. 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 And uh, God bless you. We love you so much. We're going to be back next uh, on Sunday with the service. Be sure to connect with us. Mm. If you haven't liked the page, like the page. If you haven't shared, share the page and let somebody know that giving is so important in order to, to be a blessing, in order to possess the land which God has given unto us. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here at the Greater River Church. God bless you. Uh, uh, keep in touch. Let us know how God is blessing you. We'll see you next time right here. God bless.